Hey there guys, it's Rick here. Hope you're all doing extremely well. I know I am. Welcome to today's lesson. What have I called it? Yes, I know what I've called it. The best lesson you've never had. Okay, actually that's wrong on two counts. For one, you may well have had this lesson. And for two, it's not necessarily the best lesson either. It's uh, you know, extremely important and this is why I'm showing it you. And it pertains to improvisation and fretboard knowledge. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, you know, talking about titles, it's one of the things that I find the most awkward when I'm doing YouTube videos. You know, I do the video and then I sit there going, what am I gonna call this? Uh, how about this? No, that's crap. Okay. Uh, how about this? No, that's crap. Uh, what about this? No, that's utter shite. And I sit there for hours just going, man, I can't think of a title. Um, but anyway, I managed to think of a title for this. Uh, but when I do put titles in, I get absolutely trounced in the comments section for it. But hey, hey, it is what it is. So uh, anyway, I'm digressing again. So let's get straight to the heart of the matter. Um, we're going to work on um, a great technique that opens up the fretboard uh, to give you more fretboard knowledge uh, and specifically um, to allow you to improvise more freely without worrying whereabouts you are on the fretboard. You know, uh, that was a big thing for me um, and I've spent many, many years to try and feel comfortable in every single area of the fretboard uh, and put myself in those awkward positions so that I really know where I am when I move positions. So I don't want any area of the fretboard where I don't know what I'm doing in terms of the shapes and the harmony, the chords, okay? So this is extremely important. So let's get straight to it, okay? Um, first off, the key to this, that what I'm gonna show you is to stay in one position when we are moving through a chord progression. Rather than moving all the way up the fretboard like this, we want to stay in one position um, when we're playing chords. And we want to do the same thing with scales as well. We don't want to be moving our scales around. We want to be able to stay in one position and change the scale accordingly, um, according to when the, the chords change. Okay? So, first thing is you need five shapes for this example, so I'm going to show you what the shapes are. Okay? So, our first shape starts here, root on the sixth, okay? That's the other important thing. We're, we need to know exactly, with the chords that we're playing, where the root is for that chord, okay? So, root is on the sixth, there. Okay, you'll notice that looks just like an E7 shape, but it's movable up to the third fret, so that's G7, okay? Second shape, what we're gonna do is just change the position here, so we're gonna use our third finger. We're going to play this, which is a G7 shape, okay, which happens to be the open shape anyway. Okay, so we've got two chords with the root on the sixth. Okay, then the next shape we want is this, which looks like the A7 shape. It's actually a C7 sounding chord. And the root is here on the fifth string. Okay, good. Next chord shape here. That looks like a, an open C7 chord, but it's here, so it's a D7 chord. Okay, and our root is here. So we've got two chords with the root on the fifth string. And then finally, the last chord, the root on the fourth string, looks like this. And that looks like an open D7 chord. Okay, so our root note is here. So we've only got one chord whose root is on the fourth string. So all the others, uh, we have two chords with a root note on each string. So let me just repeat that so you're, sh you're fully aware of it. First chord shape is this with the root on the sixth. Next chord shape, the root on the sixth is that. Okay. Next, fifth string. Okay. And then finally, this shape. So you've got to memorize, memorize those chords in those positions. Okay. So, perfect example to um, to show you how this works is with a blues progression. So we're going to use a simple one, four, five chord progression. All the chords are dominant chords. So in the key of G, we would have G7, C7, D7, okay? So this is our first position. And notice that I'm staying in the same position. I'm not moving at all. All the chords exist in this area of the fretboard, okay? So we have to put a scale with each one of those chords. And that's what we're going to do right now. G7, so our scale will look like this. Those are the 
notes that fit around this chord. Okay? It's okay to move either a semitone lower or a semitone higher within a position, but no more than that, okay? So, once more. So that's the scale that fits with this chord. Incidentally, it's, it's mixolydian mode, so formula is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, flat 7, okay? And now that stays the same with each one of our scales, the formula, that is. So we're going to now move to our four chord, which is C7, so that's the A7 shape, right here. Okay, so root on the fifth, so we've got the root movement goes from 1 to 4. So the scale that fits with this is this. And then we go to our five chord, which is here, D7. Okay, and the scale that fits with that is... Okay, so we have a root movement, one, four, five, the chords, and the scales that fit with the chords. So when you move from one to four, you have to change your scale accordingly. So, and again, we've just stayed in that one area of the fretboard. Good, right, now we get to uh, the next position. So here's our G7 chord. The next available position for a G7 chord is this, it's our D7 shape, okay? So now what we have to do is we have to find G7, C7, and D7 in this area of the fretboard, okay? So the best thing to do is look for our roots. So root movement, one, four, Five. Remember what I said before about the root of each chord? Okay. Our four is here, and because it's here with a little finger, um, if we moved up here, that's, we're moving out of position, so we've got to stay in position. We end up with this, remember the G7 chord shape, which is down here? That's our four chord, okay? So we have, and then staying in the same position is our D7. Okay, so scales. Okay. And for this one, I've already done this one back here. Good, so that's all the chords, the three chords for the blues in this area of the fretboard with the scales to fit. Okay, you see where I'm going with this? Good, really essential this. Okay, now we're gonna to move to the next available position. So we've had root, root. Where's the next available root for a G? It's here, okay? And we're gonna do the next position. See, we've just moved up here. We're not missing any area of the fretboard here. So we end up with the, uh, the C7, open C7 chord shape here for the G. So our root movement, one, four, five. So here's our first chord. C, and then, can you see what, what we did there? Okay. So there's our first chord with a root here, and then the four chord, and then the five chord. Okay, and again, we've shifted out of this position, we're into the next position. So, uh, scale. Okay. So that's the next available position. So let's move to the next, uh, let's find our next position. Uh, so we've had G here, where is the next available G note? It's here. So if our root is here, we don't want to miss out, um, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, 
I've just missed out a position here. It's here, it's the same note, but we're gonna use the index finger, okay? So we play the A shape here, okay? So we've already played G7, so our root movement, one, four, five, okay? So we're gonna put this an octave lower, because otherwise that would mean we'd have to change position for this chord, so we have. Again, we're staying in the same position. So scale. Chord number four. Uh, sorry. And then chord number five. Okay, good. And then the final position, the one that I jumped ahead and did before, is our G root. So we want one, four, five. Okay, so here we play the G, open G shape here. Then the D7, uh, sorry, C7 shape. In this chord, it's a C7 anyway. Um, and then finally, this shape, the D7 shape, which is a D7. Okay, so let's do the, the scales that fit with those. So that's our first chord. Then to the four. And the five. Okay, good, and then We've done all the positions, we're back to G7. Okay, good. So hopefully you see the value in this specific lesson here. What we're doing is we have to be aware of the, for one, the root movement of each chord. So we're playing a blues, one, four, five, all dominant chords. So you need to know where the root is for each position. And then put the chord with each root note uh, bollocks <laughs> and then all the way to the top okay and you've got to put the scale with each position and again like I said before you're staying in the same position for all four chords see what I mean so uh, this allows you to be completely free with your improvisation. So wherever you find yourself on the fretboard, you will know where you are because you'll have practiced those three chords in every single position available. Okay. So I found this when I, when I first really came across this and started to practice it, I found it completely liberating in terms of, you know, um, being free on the fretboard. Uh, it just blew my mind how much more comfort it gave me and sort of gave me the freedom to try lots of different things once I'd really, you know, established those those basic blues changes, you know. Um, and uh, it's, it's just a, such a powerful tool. So this is why I'm sharing it with you guys. So first step is to practice those five shapes. Make sure you know them back to front and apply it to a blues progression because you can keep it nice and simple. And the blues is just such an important um, part of developing your improvisation skills, in my opinion. Uh, it's the foundation for jazz, basically. Um, so it's essential that you develop, if you want to develop your improvisation skills, you've got to be able to, to you know, negotiate blues changes. Um, so, and remember as well, we stay in one position and alter your chord and your scale accordingly. Okay. Uh, notice I didn't do any three note per string things here because that completely moves out of position and, and uh, we don't want to do that. We want to stay in one area of the fretboard. Three note per string stuff is really useful. I still practice it a lot now, um, but when you're doing this kind of thing, it's, it's not required. Okay. So I think here endeth the lesson. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Um, make sure you practice hard with this kind of stuff. And, and what I used to do is go to the areas of the fretboard that I felt less comfortable with and work on those. Because the ones that you're gonna be comfortable with are, are obviously the first position. 
because uh, that's where everybody starts. It's a bit like when you're playing scales. Everybody's co comfortable with the first position of a major scale. By the time you get higher up on the fretboard or to position seven, that's when people start losing it because they practice from position one rather than practicing position seven. So you've got to work on the weaker areas um, of your uh, fretboard knowledge and, and you know build them into strengths. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Uh, just a quick reminder, 50% off my lesson downloads. Get on it. Link is in the description box below. It's a great way to support what I do so I can make videos like this for you guys. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.